Hello everyone, Magdalena here, Wolf of Coins. Thank you so much for tuning in. I've been wanting to make this video for quite a while now. Um, I get uh, quite a lot of questions about it, uh, so I hope this video will be helpful. Um, because many people are confused what really is and what is not Tarot de Marseille. So I <laughs> I did this mess here uh, to explain to you um, as well as I can. Uh, so let's start with what most of us know. Um, in Tarot we have this different types of decks. The most popular one, uh, the most like widely known um, and present in books about tarot is the Rider Waite Smith style deck. I don't have it, <laughs> actually. I don't own a Rider Waite Smith, but um, these are the decks that uh, have all the pictures, uh, all the cards in them have scenes with people on them. So. So yeah, this is for example six of wands and we have people here. We have not only wands, but we also have people doing stuff. Five of coins, uh, of pentacles, there are people doing stuff, okay? And they are all, this is the dark mansion tarot. And this is, for example, another one is a steampunk tarot. So they're all uh, inspired by the Rider White Smith deck. And they all have similar scenes on them, like, like, where was it? Yeah, like Nine of Swords is someone having nightmares, so a person in bed having nightmares, okay? Or what else? What else do we have here? Five of Wands, people fight, fighting. So these are the Rider Raid Smith style decks or inspired by Ryder White Smith. This is the system whoops of the White Smith. And we also have Thoth. And this is a bit more tricky because there are pips here. Okay? There are pips, but these are like specific to Thoth. Uh, Thoth also has keywords there and yeah, and um, every card has its own um, interpretation of the suit. So these are discs, but they look like flowers, okay? These are discs as well, but they are, sorry, but they are actually squares. And this is like uh, typical to a uh, Thoth deck. So um, what else do we have? Mm, we also have like decks that have their own system. There are a lot of modern decks that um, are very, very free with the interpretation of the suits. Like for example, the Mary L Tarot. This is for example, Seven of Cups. Okay, there are even no cups on this card. And it has its like its own system. Well, this is six of swords and no swords there, but there are scenes, okay? There are animals or people or angels, whatever. <laughs> um, this is six of wands, okay? So this is Mary L. And uh, yeah, and also the pip decks. So many people think that if there is a deck that has uh, does, uh, doesn't have people on the um, miners, it means it's a Tarot de Marseille. And it's not true. It's um, every Tarot de Marseille is a pip deck, but not every pip deck is a Tarot de Marseille. And I will explain how to uh, distinguish between them. Okay. Um, also, the oldest tarot decks that we have preserved, they are Italian, like the Visconti decks, for example. The example here. Um, yeah, I have this mini cute little deck here because I have the big ones, but they are, yeah, they take a lot of space. So anyway, um, the oldest ones that we have 
are from Italy, but and that they were used for um, games, for playing games. They were playing cards, mm, but then uh, the custom died out in Italy, and it survived in France and Switzerland. And then during that time, the, the most famous uh, city for producing tarot decks was a French city called Marseille. And that's how uh, they started being called Tarot de Marseille, so Tarot of Marseille. Um, however, um, they were not uh, only produced there, they were produced in Paris, in Dijon, in various, various places. Um, only the name uh, stuck to, to this um, particular style of text that they got then reintroduced to, to Italy and they, you know, associated this style of cards with uh, the city of Marseille. But Tower de Marseille doesn't have to be produced in Marseille to be called so, okay? Uh, so, 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 what are the features of Tower de Marseille? Uh, first of all, it's uh, how you can, you know, look at the deck and and think what it is. It has the woodcut style. So they, that's how they were pr produced. Each picture was cut um, in a piece of wood and then uh, a press would be used to uh, re replicate the images. And then to add colors. Um, so if you see something that, for example, has a nice picture like this, but it's obviously a painting, you already know it's not a Tarot de Marseille. Uh, because it's... Oh, whoops, sorry. Out of necessity, it had to be pretty, you know, simplistic. And yeah, and these were woodcut pictures, images. Right here, right like here. Okay. Um, another thing, um, a typical thing for Tarot de Marseille is limited color palette. This is again uh, because of the the way the images were reproduced. It was just too expensive to add many colors. Like, for example, on Visconti, this is hand, a hand-painted deck. I mean, not this one, but the, the original was hand-painted, gold gilded and whatnot. But yeah, it was, it was like a very expensive deck for an extremely uh, wealthy aristocratic mm, family. And these, as I said, were used for uh, gaming, gambling, <laughs> so they had to be cheap. And as I said, there are those uh, like limited colors, mostly like yellow, red, blue, and sometimes more, sometimes less. But these are the um, sometimes green, but uh, not too many of them. Also, um, many Tarot de Marseille readers uh, see um, deep, um, like, um, like they see the colors as symbols of something. Like, for example, yellow for intellect, or um, red for um, life forces, blood, and so so on and so forth. So since the colors are so limited, you can ascribe meanings to them and use it in your readings. Um, then what is very important, all the images are set. There are very minor differences between the decks. Um, in, for example, in the case of um, Major Arcana and Court Cards, people have the same poses always, same poses, okay, same clothes, same poses, they look in the same direction, etc. Um, for example, we have the 
Queen of Swords. Okay, this is the Queen of Swords from three different Tarot de uh, Marseille decks. And she always looks there. She always has this sword in her uh, in this hand. She has the other hand on more or less her belly. She has this crown. She has this chair. Okay. These are different images, but the base is the, exactly the same. All right. And if we look at others again. <laughs> This is Queen of Swords. She has a sword here. See, or or what do I have here? Or this is a Queen of Swords, but she's completely different, right? Uh, okay. So um, there are small differences between Terre de Marseille Type One and Two, but I made a video about it. You can check out uh, Terre de Marseille. A playlist on my channel to, to watch it. This is like a minor thing. Um, but um, what is important for someone who is not familiar with Terre de Marseille, um, how to distinguish between swords and wands. Because, yeah, <laughs> swords are not very swordy. You have this sword here, but these are also swords. So they are more like, you know, scimitars. So they are always curved. If you see a card with swords that are not curved, like this here, this is not a Tarot de Marseille. They are always curved and wands are always straight. In the older deck, like uh, Visconti, see, both wands and swords are straight. Um... So now um, I will show you decks that are similar but not quite Terre de Marseille. And a good example of that is a gorgeous, gorgeous deck that is Triomphe de la Luna. So this deck is inspired by Terre de Marseille and it has pips that um, follow the arrangement of the objects on the pips. However, uh, they have some things added and um, also these faces on the coins, but especially the majors and, um, and the court cards are different. They are more, you know, <laughs> loosely based on the traditional Im imagery. So yeah, so this is a Tower de Marseille inspired deck, but it's not exactly one. Another example would be another gorgeous deck, the Soprafino Tarot. Or also, so it's this one, I have a reproduction by In Il Manegolo. And also very, very similar deck that is the Ancient Italian Tarot. So it's an interesting example because it actually quite strictly follows the arrangements and even floral elements on the cards. And floral elements are very important in Tarot de Marseille. Every deck has them in exactly same arrangement. I will mm, show you later, but yeah. Um, these cards are very close to Terre de Marseille, but for example, they are not woodcut style. These were probably uh, etched in copper and this way uh, reproduced. Also, they have like more colors and the images are more realistic. And there are some differences to, to the traditional Terre de Marseille arrangement. So... <laughs> like <laughs> with this crayfish on the plate. I love it, by the way. Uh, but yeah, it is very close, but it's not actually a Tarot de Marseille. So, um, decks that are definitely not Tarot de Marseille, but are actually older than Tarot de Marseille. 
So, as I mentioned, the Visconti Tarot. This is 15th century. And let's, let's look at the differences. So here, oh, maybe I will put it here. This. This is Tarot de Marseille, Pierre Madeni. And this is Seven of Coins, Three of Wands, and Seven of Swords. I just chose these. Um, I wanted you to, to see the difference between wands and swords and just you know, see that there are set arrangements of, of the objects, of the symbols of the suit. So we have the Visconti and okay. Three of wands looks similar enough. It only has this ribbon here and doesn't have the foliage here. But the swords are not curved. They are straight and the coins are arranged differently because here we have this four, okay, but then then they are two plus one and here they are one plus two. So it's it's different. That's how you can easily tell. Also. Another deck that is uh, old but is not a tarot de Marseille is the Rosenwald tarot. And here we have similarities again, because actually the swords are curved. This image is very close to, to Tarot de Marseille style. It doesn't have the flowers, because, you know, each, every Tarot de Marseille will have these, the same, they may look a bit differently, but they will be there. If they are not there, <laughs> it's probably not Tarot de Marseille. See, there are also those flowers here. Um, so yeah, Three of Wands is also similar without foliage and the seven, seven of Coins have completely different arrangement of the coins. And the coins are always, in Tarn de Marseille, they always look the same. Four plus two plus one in, in this... Um, you know, enclosed in foliage, like this. See, it's it, there are like different styles, dif different artists, different uh, craftsmen produce these, but always there is this same, same element, same arrangement. Um, this is Pierre Madeni, this is Jean Noblet, and this is uh, Jean Dodal. Uh, Another one would be the Budapest Tarot. And we can see that even though the coins are arranged in the same fashion, except the foliage, um, and the wands are more or less also arranged the same, the swords are curved, but in a different way arranged completely differently. So we have these five here and one and one here. Completely different. But they were obviously uh, woodcuts, right? So what else do I want to show you? Yeah, lastly, lastly it will be um, Definitely not Terre de Marseille, but often confused with Terre de Marseille because um, there are no people on the pips. So this would be simply modern pip decks like the China Tarot I was already showing you. Or uh, the Crystal Tarot. Crystal Tarot. Mm. Or, um, where is it? Or Yashniak Tarot, this one. So, there are, um, simply, there are, um, there is the number of the symbols of the suit arranged just like, mm, like the artist saw fit, not, it's not related in any way to the traditional Terre de Marseille uh, setting. Mm. 
how can I show? Okay, so look at that. Look at that, for example. This is Crystal Tarot. And we will have three wands arranged like this. Uh, the coins like this. And the swords. There is the square and the triangle. This deck actually, these pips are based on um, on a particular style, but it's not Tardemar style. Okay, so let's not go there right now. And China Tarot. Yeah, you can see. You can just put seven swords like this. And these are actually not wands. There are pins, but they are in a roll of wands. And also coins. So you can see, uh, not woodcut style, not limited color palette, not arranged in the way that Terre de Marseille is. No foliage. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> This is, I think, mostly it, what I wanted to show you about the court cards <laughs> with uh, Triomphe de la Luna. You see, it's a uh, Queen of Swords, okay? It's completely not the image from Tarot de Marseille. The Sun card is definitely inspired by Tarot de Marseille. Look at that. But, of course, there is Macabre here. And... Yeah, please let me know if this was helpful in any way. Um, if you have any more questions, please ask. And uh, I hope you will uh, want to explore more uh, the world of Terre de Marseille, which I really, really love. So thank you very much uh, for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye!